Our objective in this project is to create a symmetrical barbed wire circular border. You may have already seen the other project where we took a piece of clip art and shaped it into kind of a rustic pattern. And for some cases that may be exactly what we need. But if we need a truly mathematically perfect symmetrical barbed wire border, then that's our objective here. You're going to see we're going to use some complex steps, but the critical part is just to do the simple steps in the right order. Let's zoom up on a portion of this so you can see a little better what we're trying to accomplish. So let's get started on this. First we'll get rid of this part and we'll start with our circle. I'm going to click on the ellipse tool hold down the shift and the control to drag a perfect circle. I'll make that circle four inches. I have the padlock locked, so I only have to change one of those when I press enter. Both of them will go to four inches. I'll press a single keystroke P to put that in the middle of the page. Then I'm going to make um, another circle, so let's edit and duplicate. I have my duplicate set up to where it places a duplicate on top of the first object, so it doesn't look like, but we have two circles now. The last one, I'm going to make that instead of four inches, let's maybe make it 3.625. And then we're going to get to work on the outer circle. I'm going to my shape tool, I'm going to click on the outer circle, grab one of the nodes, drag that around, holding the control key where it's 15 degrees away from the top or at 105 degrees. The other one, I'll drag it around 15 degrees away from the top or 75 degrees. Then when I drop it off, you'll see that I'm going from 255 degrees to 285 degrees or 30 degrees right at the top of the circle. That's my objective. Then we're going to use the X3 Smart Fill tool to fill that shape. For no good reason, I'm going to outline that in red. Actually fill it with nothing. While normally I would leave the triangle there, or my piece of pie, I guess I should call it. It'll get a little confusing here in a minute, so I'm just going to delete that. I needed it only to create that shape, which we'll use to continue. I'm going to select that shape, and we'll zoom up on that which is selected. And then I'm going to be sure that we have on our Snap to Objects, it is, so I'm good to go. I'll go to my freehand tool, and when I get close to the center of that line, notice it's showing me midpoint. I'm going to snap there. We'll go to the midpoint on the other side. I'm going to go back to the shape tool now. With the shape tool selected, that selects that object I just created. Now a line. I'm going to double click, which selects all nodes within the shape or shape selected. Then I'm going to turn that into a curve. Currently it's a line. I want it to be a curve so I can manipulate it and instead of a straight line I'd like an S in there. I'm going to drag a box around the leftmost node and we'll drag this up about here. Drag this one down a little I'll drag this up a little more. And that's going to be the beginning of our barbed wire. Now we'll zoom out on all objects to get a little better picture of what we have. Now I'll go back to my pick tool and our new S shape is currently selected. I'm going to single click again on that which brings up the rotation and skew handles and the center of rotation designator 
and I'm going to drag it out to the center of the circle. Then we'll go to Arrange, Transformation, Rotate, which should bring up our transformation docker in the rotation mode or function. And I'm going to tell it I'd like to rotate that 30 degrees. And then we'll apply that to the duplicate. Let's do that and go all the way around our part. So I duplicated that 11 times, making us a total of 11 uh, little swirls. And now we have pretty much what we need for our a single strand of our barbed wire. But I need those combined to continue with the next step. So what I'm going to do is double click on the pick tool. That will select everything. I should have 14 objects selected. Notice down here I do. That's 12 strands of barbed wire. And then my inner circle and my shape. Well, I really don't want the circle included in that. So I'm going to shift click on it. Notice now I didn't get it. I've still got 14. Now I have 13 objects with the shift key held down. I'm going to take this shape out of the selection. Now I'm down to 12 shapes. And if I did that right, if I go to arrange, and I didn't do it right because I can't close the path. So we'll do that again. Double click on the pick tool. Matter of fact, I'm going to zoom up here to where I can get a little better look here. I have 14 objects now selected. I'm going to take this object out of the selection. 13 objects. I'm going to take this object out of the selection. Now, when we go to Arrange, Close Path, Close Nodes with Straight Lines, now I have one continuous strand of that wire as we go around. Let's zoom back out. And at this point, I'm going to go back to my pick tool to select that single curve. And I need now to contour that. So I'm going to go to Effects, Contour, which calls up the Contour Docker. And I think I'll go with about 50 thousandths. One step to the inside. That looks about right. What I now have selected, note, is a contour group on layer 1. I can't do what I need to do with a group. So I'm going to arrange, me, break contour group apart. Now I have two objects selected, which I'm going to combine to actually form one object. I'm going to fill that for no good reason with the yellow, so you can see distinctly what we have. That's one strand of barbed wire inside and out, so to speak. So with it selected, I'm going to go back to my transformation. I'm going to then rotate that half of one strand, or half of 30 degrees, which would be 15 degrees. And I'll apply that to the duplicate. Just so you can kind of get a feel on what we're doing, I'm going to fill that with a gray. And you'll see now that we have the two strands of barbed wire. Alas, one is completely on top of the other. What we really need is for every other loop that one strand goes behind the other. So that's our next step. Well, obviously, we can't make it do it, but we have to give it that illusion. So to do that, I'm going to go back to my, let's go to our zoom tool where we can get a little better look up here. We'll fold this up to get it out of the road. What I actually need to do is have some way to cut this area out, every other uh, roll there in our strand of wire. To do that, I think what I'll do is just unfill that item. And now I have a clear distinction of what I need cut out. We'll again use our Smart Fill tool, come in and fill that area. What I'm going to use that white for is a cookie cutter to cut out the strands 
every other strand so it will appear as if the yellow will go back behind this other wire. So I'm going to expand that, however, instead of 100%, let's maybe make it about 103%, just make that a hair bigger. Then we'll zoom back out again. We go back to my transformation, and we're going to rotate that. Let's see if that's still selected. Yes, our object there is still selected. I'm going to click it again to get my center of rotation, drag my center of rotation out to the center of the circle. Then we're going to rotate that every two, every other crossing, which should be 30 degrees, and apply that to the duplicate. So now every other strand we have our cookie cutter. The next step is to use those white diamonds to trim out one of the wires. Let's fold this up to where we can see a little better what we're doing. And I'm going to use a rather advanced feature of Corel here just because it's, I see so few people using it and that's letting CorelDRAW find all of those intricate parts down inside uh, other items. In this case, yes, there might be an easier way to do it, but uh, I'm going to use Corel's Edit and Find to find all of those white diamonds. So let's tell it to Find Objects. That'll call up the Find Object Wizard, and I'm going to tell it to begin a new search. Next, I'm going to tell it I want it to find all curves which have a fill, a uniform fill, and I want to, now I think next, yeah, there it is, and then a specific, not any uniform fill, but a specific uniform fill, a white uniform fill, and then we'll next. At this point, I could say this, as a matter of fact, I really do already have this saved, so those several steps you've seen here, I normally wouldn't have to go through. I simply open up an existing saved search. Very often, when I'm needing to pull intricate items out of uh, a lot of other items, which would be difficult to select any other way, I always fill those items with white. So then I can call up this search, and immediately, just in a few seconds, uh, pull pull out a complex selection. But in this case we started from scratch just to introduce many who are not using this fantastic tool. And we'll finish. And I'm going to tell it to find all. Now all of those are selected. I'm going to close out our search. And then I'm going to combine those. Arrange and combine. Now all those diamonds are actually just one item. And I'm going to use them to trim out the yellow rope or braid of our barbed wire. Maybe just before I do that, though, I'm going to select the one that is not filled now. We'll refill that with the grays so it'll have a little better impact here immediately when I trim those. I'm going to use the tab key now to select my white object. How do I know? I press tab. That was the last object created, so it should be first in the tab list, and I'm confirming that. That's white fill, black outline. That must be my combined group of diamonds. I am then going to go to Arrange and Shaping. Call up the Shaping Docker. I'm going to trim, but when I get through with this trim, I no longer need the white diamond. So I'm turning off the source, and I'm going to tell it that I want those diamonds to trim out the yellow. We'll shut down all of our dockers now. And do you see what we have? I'm going to zoom in on that so we can get a better look. Now we have the illusion of the two wires going back and forth behind one another. Now we will 
start working on the barb itself. So I'm going to select the shape one last time. We'll click on our zoom tool. Zoom to that which is selected to zoom upon that object. And then we'll begin building a barb. I think I'll just start with one rectangle about that size. We'll drag that right somewhat to the center of our crossover there of these. One of them then we'll drag this way, duplicate it. We'll do the same thing the other way. But then this one we actually would like for that to be our barb. So I'm going to click here add a point. Be sure that point is a cusp so we can make it a sharp point instead of rounded. Then we should be able to grab that up and drag it off maybe in this direction. And we'll shape that to make a nice sharp point like a barb should have. Let's see how that looks. That's close enough. So I'm going to duplicate that, Control D. Then I'm going to flip the duplicate. Then I'm going to make it, I'm going to shift select this side and press T to align the tops of those. And then I'm going to flip it. I really want that going out the other direction. So there's our barb. I'm going to fill those with white. It has a black outline, but it's not quite dark enough. So we'll go to our outline tool. Maybe make that a little darker. Yeah, maybe not that dark. Let's go ten thousandths. That's about what I wanted. And we'll combine those so they don't inadvertently fall apart. Now we'll zoom back out. We'll select that object again so we have the center of rotation. Drag that center of rotation out as we have several times before. Ah, but remember I turned off our snap to objects. So we'll go back to snap to objects. Then find that and it should snap to the center of our circle. Then we'll go back to arrange transformation and rotate to call up our transformation docker with a rotation function enacted and we decide what how many degrees we want this actually it depends on how many barbs we want on this if we want a really tight barb we could make this over 15 degrees that would be on every single one of our crosses but then we would have wasted a lot of time by making that nice in out connection here. So we could go uh, every 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, 75 degrees, or 90 degrees. As a matter of fact, I hope you'll experiment with all of those. They give you a different look. But let's opt for maybe 60 degrees. And then I'm going to apply that to the duplicate. And there we have, we'll close up our transformation now, and there we have a six barbed circular, mathematically perfect barbed wire border. We should go ahead and clean that up a little bit, so we'll zoom around just the top area. We really no longer need this part, so we'll delete it, and we have a circle in there that is not needed at all. We'll delete it since we no longer need to snap to the center of it. And there we have our completed part.